All right, welcome to episode two from chapter nine. And in this very brief episode, we're going to cover two concepts. What's the difference between an anaerobic and an aerobic respiration? And how do photosynthesis and cellular respiration compare to each other? So let's get down to business. First, we're going to look over here on the left-hand side of your screen. And this one deals with the difference between aerobic and anaerobic. And aerobic refers to using oxygen. So I always kind of remembered it like this. Aerobic refers to air, and the thing that we get out of the air that we breathe is going to be oxygen. All right? So the number one thing that we do this for is for oxygen. Now, if you can remember that there's three steps to cellular respiration, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. The Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, especially the electron transport chain, these guys are considered aerobic. So everything that happens inside the mitochondrion is considered aerobic. Okay, so make sure you take a note of that. That's very important for you to understand. Okay, if you put an an in front of aerobic, that means no. So this would mean no oxygen. So out of your three steps, glycolysis, and remember that glycolysis occurs, in the, in the cytoplasm, let me get myself caught up here, cytoplasm. Okay, that is considered anaerobic. So you can do glycolysis without having oxygen available, okay? So I want you to remember this. One, the anaerobic part of cellular respiration is glycolysis. That occurs in the cytoplasm. Two, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain those two things that occur inside the mitochondrion, those are considered aerobic, and you have to have oxygen to do those two. So anything that occurs inside the mitochondrion requires oxygen. All right, I want to get rid of this stuff before we start writing all over the next one. All right, so over here on the right-hand side of your screen is a graphic that shows you the comparison between cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Okay, so... Really, I just want to kind of draw a squiggly line right through here because everything on top is photosynthesis and everything below it is respiration, right? Now, what you want to remember is the products of one become the reactants of the other. So when we say organic molecules, as you can see it here in this graphic, that refers to glucose, which is C6H12O6. So photosynthesis, the products are going to be glucose and oxygen, and those become the reactants for the mitochondrion to produce ATP down here, and the waste products, CO2 and H2O, will become the reactants. So let's do this over here. Let's make ourselves a little P, or a little key. P equals products, and then we'll say R equals the reactants. Now you see these arrows right here? The products, which are glucose and oxygen, will become the reactants for the mitochondrion in cellular respiration. The products, which are of cellular respiration, which is carbon dioxide and water, will become the reactants for photosynthesis. Okay? And as you can essentially see here, this light energy is going to be transferred through these two chemical processes into ATP, which is going to be used to produce the work that a cell needs to do. And any waste energy, let's say this here, any waste energy from this process, because this is not 100% um, efficient, I mean, nothing is 100% efficient, is, is given away as heat. Okay? All right, now that's going to end this uh, episode. But I do want to make sure that you remember, especially that little graphic that popped up with Dwight Schrute's face, you may want to go back and write that stuff down. And then I want you to pay attention over here because the key that you want to get out of this chemical or this graphic is the products of one reaction, photosynthesis for example, will become the reactants for the other cellular respiration. All right. Until the next episode, we're going to catch you on the flip side.